Hey there, so I am going to be going through Twitter analytics this evening and I'm going to be showing you guys a quick run through of all your Twitter analytics and where you can find certain information and things like that. So first of all, we want to go to our main Twitter feed bit here and then go up to your tiny little profile picture on the right and then down to where it says analytics. You may or may not need to activate analytics. Sometimes it can be a bit difficult to find. So if it is, just type in Twitter analytics in Google and then click the first one that um, comes up and it should log you into Twitter analytics or at least tell you to activate it. So if you're having trouble, type Twitter analytics into Google and click on it that way and get through it that way. Because sometimes if you're not already on it, you can't select it from the settings bit. So once you have done all that and you've got to your analytics homepage, this is generally what it will look like. So we have, for some reason, it still has my old Twitter handle. I don't know why, I can't figure out how to change it, but there we go. Um, and then we have my account name, so all of my information. And then we have a 28 day summary at the top here. So it tells me how much um, I've gone up and down in regards to how many times I've tweeted, um, tweet impressions, profile visits, mentions, and followers as well. So that gives you a general idea of how much you have increased or decreased in those areas in the past 28 days. So that could be quite good if you're keeping track of your um, activity on Twitter. So. There is that bit and then we have a sort of monthly rundown. So for July, it'll tell you your tweet highlights. So this one will tell you which of your tweets was your top tweets. Um, so your top tweet is the one that has the most impressions and impressions mean um, have been seen by the most people. So it's not necessarily that people have clicked on it, but it's just that that tweet has been served to somebody's feed and they've scrolled past it or they've seen it or at least they have given some indication that they've seen it. So that's what your impressions are. And then we have top mentions. So if you've been mentioned in a tweet, um, it'll be the tweet that has the most engagements that you are mentioned in. So that will be your top mentioned one. Your top followers will be um, the follower you who is following you that has the most followers themselves. Um, and then top media tweet, so that'll be something like if you've tweeted a picture or anything like that. Um, and that again goes by impressions. So they are a general rundown of what that section highlights and then it will go down and it'll do like month by month. So it'll be June, May, April, and it'll keep going, I think. It has to stop eventually, but um, it'll keep going for quite a while. So if you wanna know top tweets for like December, you can probably scroll down um, and see it that way, but it will only do it for as long as you've had analytics activated for. So if you have just now activated your analytics, you probably won't have all this information because it hasn't actually collected any of that data. So this is the main general page. And then over here we have a little tiny July summary. And that just basically gives us um, a rundown of our activity. So we have tweets, how many tweets I have um, published in July so far, um, how many impressions, so how many people have seen my tweets, profile visits, how many people have visited my profile, mentions, how many people have mentioned me in tweets, and how many new followers I have in July. Um, and then we have the advertise on Twitter section, because I haven't activated my Twitter ads yet, which I will be doing in a separate video, so if you wanna know how to do that, um, there will be a video up very, very soon, or if, you're watching this in the future, then it should be already up. So that is this section. And then we will go to the tweets homepage. So this is your tweet activity. And this tells you, this little graph at the top will tell you how many impressions over a 28 day period you have had. Um, so I've had 25.4K, I was gonna say thousand, but I wasn't really sure if that was the right way to say it. 25.4K impressions over a 28 day period. Um, so 25,400 people have seen the tweets that I have posted, which is pretty impressive over a 28 day period. Um, and then down here, it will tell you all of your tweets um, in order of the way you have posted them, how many impressions they have, so how many people have seen the tweets, 
how many engagements, so total number of times a user has interacted with a tweet, so that could be a click on a tweet, um, it could be click on like a hashtag you've put on there, um, if they've retweeted, if they've replied to you, if they've favorited, pretty much any sort of interaction with your tweet, that will be classed as an engagement. And then you have an engagement rate as well, which just sort of gives you a percentage number of how many times um, your tweet has been engaged with compared to like impressions and stuff. So this is good if you want to kind of know what tweets work and what tweets don't work. Um, the top tweet section will give you probably a little bit better overview of that. So this will give you the rundown of all of your top tweets. So which tweets have the most impressions. Twitter tends to do like top tweets and top things regarding impressions rather than engagements, which I'm not 100% down with. I think engagements is a lot more important than impressions because there's a lot of faults to do with impressions. It could be a case that someone has scrolled past your tweet, but it doesn't necessarily mean someone has actually read it. So I actually class engagements as a higher priority than impressions, but Twitter seems to think impressions are very important. So that is how they categorize it. But engagements is really what you're going for. But usually ones that have a lot of impressions will have a lot of engagements as well. So you can sort of run down and see which ones have had a lot of engagements. So this one here, um, I reposted Ingrid Nilsson's coming out video because I thought it was amazing and that had a lot more engagements. So obviously a lot of people have clicked through on that link um, to go and watch that. So this is basically just a rundown of your tweets um, and just gives you an idea of what your most popular tweets are and what kind of things you should be posting in the future. And then over on the right we have engagement. So this will show um, engagement rates. So again, I think that's calculated from like impressions and stuff and compared to engagement and then you get a percentage. Um, and then we have link, 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 I can't even say it, link clicks. So if you put a link in any of your Twitter um, posts, then it will tell you how many times those links have been clicked in a 28 day period. Um, how many times your tweets have been retweeted, how many times they've been favorited, and how many times people have replied to you as well. So I actually prefer this section here because it gives me a better overview and a better idea of what my tweets are doing and how popular they are, how many times people are engaging with me. Um, and I just, that I find more helpful than how many people have may have seen the tweets. So that is that section. Then on followers we have just a general overview of who follows you, like who they are, are they a man, are they a woman? Um, interest is really good because you can kind of get to grips with who um, is following you, what they're interested in. So for example, I used to be a beauty blogger, so I have a lot of makeup and fashion followers from my beauty blogging days. So they are my top two um, interests. So. I think Twitter pulls these this information from third party sites. I don't think it pulls it from anything you post on Twitter. Um, I don't know which third party sites it pulls it from. I haven't really done the research into that, but it gets an idea of what you're interested in and kind of what you want to see. So this is a good thing if you're kind of wondering what you should be posting about and what kind of things your followers might be interested in. Um, so mine are generally like shopping, beauty, fashion-y kind of things, which is cool, I don't mind. Um, and then we have wireless carrier as well. I'm not 100% sure why you need to know what kind of network these people are on, but it tells you anyway. Um, so it has all the different phone networks down here as well. I was very confused about what these were and then realised that they must be American networks. We do not have them in the UK, but this will give you a, just a general overview of your demographic and who you're targeting on Twitter, what kind of people you're targeting. Um, and then, so that is your followers. You can also look at all Twitter users as well, but it's such a broad thing that unless you're like a big brand or a company, like an actual, someone like Apple or something, um, I can't really see the use of this section, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe there is a use to it, but not for sort of my purposes and stuff like that. And then you have your your organic audience section. So this is more the people that come across your tweets on a day-to-day -day basis rather than people who actually follow you. So if you tweet something out with a hashtag, 
that this will be the data from the people that will see that like on the hashtag rather than people who are following your account and actually see that on the feed. So that is this section here. And again, it just gives you a general idea of what gender they are, what kind of things they're interested in and stuff like that. And then we have tools. So we have an app manager. So if you have an app and you want to promote your app, um, you can upload your app into here um, and basically tweet about your app and get people to click on it. And then we also have conversion tracking as well. So this is good if you maybe have an online shop and you want to know how many people are coming through from Twitter and actually buying stuff from your shop. So this is more for um, e-commerce kind of people. If you have, if you sell anything on an online shop and you want to sort of um, post about it on Twitter, then this will be a good thing to activate. Um, but I don't sell anything, so I don't need to set it up as of yet. But that is pretty much everything for Twitter analytics. Um, you can also sign up for Twitter ads through this portal as well. But this is just a general idea of what happens in your Twitter analytics and what kind of information it gives you. Um, and this is always good if you are really, really getting down to business with your social media strategy. Um, or if you just want to knuckle down on a bit of Twitter, then this is something that you should activate and sort of monitor. Don't, doesn't matter how you monitor it, just check back in every now and again and you'll be right. So that is all for now about Twitter analytics. I hope this was helpful. If you do have any more questions about Twitter analytics, it's actually very hard to say, Twitter analytics. If you have any more questions, then please post them in the comments down below or you can post a comment on my blog as well if you are watching this through my blog. Hello. Um, and that is pretty much all for now. So I will see you in future videos. Goodbye.